In a Christian West, threatened from all sides by Muslim conquests and barbarian invasions, an isolated monastery will attract crowds of pilgrims. Perched on a rock in the middle of a huge bay, the Mont Saint-Michel Abbey, a fortress of faith, became a major center of pilgrimage in the Middle Ages. The bay presented many dangers for pilgrims for whom the sea was an unknown and frightening element. Large tides, fog, quicksand. Despite all these deadly risks, they still attempted the crossing. After days and weeks of walking, this final step towards Saint-Michel was to ensure their salvation in eternity. For the Archangel is the one who struck down the dragon, a symbol of the victory of good over evil. To walk to the Mount was to walk to the other world, to the Jerusalem of the Apocalypse. In this symbolic crossing, there is the symbol of death. The bay is at risk from the sea, at risk from death. It is necessary to face this sea, which is a hostile, frightening element. And it is necessary to climb the rock with its slender silhouette spurting from the earth. It seems like an invitation to climb toward the sky and to be stronger to face the last judgment. In this multi-layered architecture, the constructions on the rock were assembled one after the other, even one on top of the other, gradually, century after century. To go back in time, it is necessary to descend into the bowels of the abbey towards Notre Dame sous Terre, or Our Lady Underground. This rock was left here on purpose, and we'll find it throughout the Romanesque Abbey. This piece of rock could have been blown up, but the builders dramatized it. Why? Because it was the archangel who consecrated the rock, so they purposely left it. The architecture has joined, even glued itself to this rock, which is in a way sacralized. The Church of Our Lady Underground is the heart of the Abbey. About a dozen meters long, it is located under the nave of the Abbey's church and bears witness to the origins of the monument. This church, which is in the heart of Romanesque buildings, is the oldest part. It dates from the 10th century. It probably succeeded the first church, the 8th century church founded by Saint Aubert. Legend has it that a bishop of Avranches, at the request of the archangel who appeared to him in a dream three times, founded a church in his honor. And this church copied an Italian sanctuary very famous at the time, the Monte Gargano in Apulia, but very quickly supplanted it and became in its turn the largest eastern sanctuary dedicated to the archangel. Since 2001, the brothers and sisters of the monastic fraternities of Jerusalem have been providing a religious presence on the Mount. For these monks and nuns, life is structured around three inseparable pillars, prayer, work, and fraternal life. The sacred, I think, is everything that rises. So architecture will contribute to this elevation. Here in this construction of Mont Saint-Michel, it's something that rises, and it has been built progressively, epoch after epoch, encompassing things from earlier times. The monument is built on rock, and also the rock of faith of all these builders. A sacred monument is something that will help man, help each of us to go higher, to go further, to go beyond the everyday without denying it.
From the 11th century onwards, the Benedictine monastery had to expand to accommodate the growing number of pilgrims. The construction site represents a technical tour de force, a dizzying feat. The objective, to build a church 80 meters long at the top of the rock. To create such a vast surface, it is necessary to create an enormous substructure composed of four crypts distributed on the peak of the mountain. This Latin cross-shaped base inscribes Christ's passion in the stone. Only the nave, which was originally twice as large, remains from the Romanesque period. For the history of the abbey is marked by destruction and reconstruction. This typically Romanesque nave thus coexists with another architectural style. The choir that collapsed in the 15th century has been rebuilt. A true masterpiece of flamboyant Gothic architecture its entire construction seeks to express vertical momentum and let in light. Outside the Abbey Church, a group of monastic buildings was built in the 13th century to accommodate more than 60 monks. In barely 25 years, it became a true medieval skyscraper, which was built on the side of a rock. Two bodies of buildings on three floors, the feat of this formidable achievement is such that since its origin, it has been called La Merveille, the wonder. One of the most emblematic rooms of the wonder is the vast and luminous refectory where the monks ate their meals in silence. When we enter this room, we don't see the windows, but we bathe in the light and when we move forward, the wall disappears. It's like a curtain of light. And this light, the only light of the day that the monks can eat in, so as to obey St. Benedict's rule, it represents the word of God. During the 30 minutes of the meal, a monk, the reader, also called the semelier, reads the lives of saints. He reads in recto tono, reciting in a single tone. But the voice does not roll in the room, it hovers. If you read it aloud, it sounds normal. It reverberates. But if you read recto tono, the speech responds to the light in this infinite horizontal way. Just to illustrate my point. De la lecture de la règle de Saint Benoît au chapitre 41, des heures auxquelles les frères doivent prendre leur repas. Depuis la Sainte Pâque jusqu'à la Pentecôte, les frères prendront leur réflexion à la sixième heure et ils souperont le soir. And this horizontal, it responds to light. That's what's extraordinary in this hall. Light and speech are one. The staging of light, silence, isolation. Here, the whole architecture is at the service of the spirituality of the monks. Light, symbol of the divine presence, enters the room of the knights thanks to these large circular windows. Here, in the middle of a library, Monks studied sacred texts, but also the ancient philosophers. This abbey was a place of great knowledge in the Middle Ages. Gothic architecture responds to a philosophy, and this philosophy is deeply marked by the philosophy of light. In the abbey church, the pilgrim comes from the west, where the sun sets. The officiant, the religious community, is in the choir to the east, where the sun rises. Following this thought, the sunrise is symbolically that of the resurrection. 
that all of humanity awaited in the Middle Ages. Toute l'humanité attend au Moyen Âge. We are here in front of a Gothic architecture, which, in a certain way, is the representation of the celestial Jerusalem. In other words, an architectural transcription of a thought and a philosophy in which, of course, light plays a considerable role. In a few centuries, Mont Saint-Michel has gone from being a monastery apart from the world to a wonder of the Gothic style. By building such a masterpiece on the top of a rock surrounded by great tides, the monastic builders demonstrated a true act of faith. <laughs> 